Welcome to the Money Mastermind Show. Let's talk money. Welcome to the Money Mastermind Show. Tonight, we are talking about using your money and your time for good. And to help us out, we have a special guest. We have Harlan, otherwise known as Luke, otherwise known as Flexo Landis of LukeLandis.com. And the rest of the Money Mastermind show are the venerable uh, Miranda Marquette of Planting Money Seeds, Tom Drake of the Canadian Finance Blog, and um, we have two others who weren't able to make it tonight. That's Peter Anderson of Bible Money Matters and Kyle Prevo of YoungAndThrifty.ca. I'm Glenn Craig of Free From Broke, and I'll be moderating tonight. So, let's jump into this, helping others. Um, I think it's something that most of us generally would want to do. I don't think most of us are that greedy that we don't want to help any other people at all. Um, but I think the question is, how can we best do it? And what's the best way to go about just giving our money or our time to other people? Um, and, and I think let's maybe start with money, because I think that's what a lot of people think about when they think about... Um, Giving to others. So, what, what maybe what's the best way that we can portion out our money to help people? Well, when th there are certain times where you have to focus foremost on yourself, and that's completely understandable. Um, I I know that uh, there was a time when I was not. Um, in good financial shape myself, and there are lots of things I would have liked to have been able to do with my, you know, with my money and uh, and being able to uh, give back and, and help others. Um, but in certain instances, you doing so might put you in a precarious financial situation yourself, um, and you you have to think about your family and your future as well. Um, so that's that's one of the reasons that I think people talk. Um, not just about giving their money, but their time or their talents as well, as well as their treasure. You know, that's the three T's, a trifecta of, uh, of giving. Um, so there's, there's no, it, it, it's hard to say, you know, a good rule of thumb as far as, you know, giving money away or, or how to deal with charity. Um, because you can you can offer some percentages, you know, maybe work to give away 10% of your income, um, but it, it it can really be depending on your situation, it can really be a, a difficult um, a difficult thing to achieve. Of course, you know, at being able to achieve difficult things like um, you know like giving 10% of your income when you might need that money to save for the future for your family. Or you might need that money to pay off debt, or you might need that money to pay your mortgage or your rent. Uh, being able to, um, you know, uh, still get past all of those basic needs and and give 10% of your income um, does it, it, it's rewarding because you see this as something important and you prioritize it. Um, and that's why a lot of people start that way. I, I think the 10% comes from um, Traditionally, in certain religions, um, there's uh, there's the uh, you know, the people are encouraged to give 10% of their income back to either their church or their community, and um, I think that's just a good place to start. But I wouldn't beat yourself up over not being able to do that and deciding that you need to prioritize other things in your life uh, for a certain amount of time. That's what I had to do. I mean, I, I wasn't able to um, give to charity um, for a long time, and so I, you know, I looked, I looked at, you know, into other ways to give back. Whether it was, uh, you know, for the most part, it was volunteering with arts organizations. That's pretty much what I did when, you know, when I I didn't have money because I wasn't even, you know, I wasn't able to afford to work. Um, I was in worse and worse situ financial situations each month, but I could still find time to, uh, you know, contribute my time. I think you make a, a, a great point in um, finding the priority, too. Uh, you know, you talk about 10%, and I know certain people, they have that as a set, um, but I think we live in a, a national society where we're not even putting enough money into our savings or into retirement 
So where is the priority? Do we maybe make sure that we take care of ourselves first? Is that greedy? Um, you know, I think it's a fine line to, to some degree. Um, you know, do, or do we do we put a, maybe a pay ourselves first and make sure that we're always putting money away? But you know, where do you where do you weigh that money to put away? Well, one of the things that has always struck me is the old that they compare giving to the whole spiel that they give you on your airline, right? You have you know, take care of yourself first. Before you put the mask on your child, you're supposed to put the mask on yourself first and make sure that you're taken care of. Because how are you supposed to take care of, you know, and I thought about this a lot too once I started traveling more with my son, where we're sitting there and and I was thinking about it and I was like, well, of course, as a mother, my first instinct is, you know, put that mask on my son and make sure he's taken care of. But what would happen to him if I didn't take care of myself first? Would I even be able to get the mask on him if I was passing out because I was trying to get the mask on him? So that that comparison, I think, is something that's kind of valid. I mean, how can you take care of somebody else if you haven't already taken care of where you're at? And so, you know, while I wouldn't advocate, like, going overboard and being, well, I've got to have my big fancy car and I have to have my big fancy house and I have to have all these things before I start giving, I do think the basic level of taking care of your survival needs is important before you start getting carried away with the charitable giving. And just like uh, we've mentioned a few times on this show, if you have debt, that's pretty much should always be priority number one. Like <laughs> to get rid of that, because you, you can't help anyone else when, when you're when you're in debt. But eventually, you get to a point where where you do have some available money, you can help out. And can we get a little more specific on that debt to this way? Because I think like like well, I mean, let's be honest. My mortgage is debt, but if I wait <laughs> until I pay off my mortgage to to donate anything, high um, interest credit card debt. <laughs> yeah. The, the the crippling debt, yeah, not, not so much a mortgage. Right. No, you know, I, I throw that out there because not everybody that's listening and watching um, knows the distinction necessarily. Right. So. Yeah. So. So yeah, I just I think that too. I think it just depends on your personal preference as well. And just just as you can step up your retirement account contributions, you can step up your charitable contributions. Harlan was talking about 10%, and as he said, that's a really common number uh, from our um, traditional standpoint. And But some people can't just immediately go, oh, well, I'm just going to do 10% of my income every month, just as a lot of people are looking at it and they say, oh, really, give 10% of my, in you know, for, for my retirement savings? I cannot do that right now. And so you can step it up just as you would with any other goal. You can start out by saying, well, I can do, I can start out by giving like $50 or, you know, I can give 2% of my income this month. And after six months, after I'm used to it and after I've made some changes and after I've got a raise, maybe I can step that up. And so you can start stepping up towards your goal. I mean, you can make it a goal just as you would any other financial goal that you have. Now, I mean, I might get... Uh Blasted for this, oh, but no. I'm just going to throw it out there. Um, we all pay taxes, and taxes pay for any number of different organizations and, and things out there. Um, is it wrong to think that because of the t we're paying our taxes, that we're already giving to different charities? Well, taxes don't pay for ev all the needs that exist out there in the world. Um, you know, the taxes that you pay, yeah, a portion of that will go to welfare programs and other things sponsored by state and national government. But it doesn't really, uh, I mean, you look at that and you see how people, um, you know, criticize the same governments for, uh, you know, mis misusing the funds or, or the funds are running low and we're worried about Social Security. I mean, if, if you're going to criticize the government for mishandling the money that we use for tax, you can also then use the fact that you pay taxes kind of an excuse and say, well, well, I'm doing enough good in the world by paying taxes. Um, what, also, I mean, we, as an individual, we don't have control over how our tax money is spent, uh, divided amongst all of the uh, federal governmental needs. Um, like uh, you know everything from uh, from the military to um, to uh, to welfare and to education 
you know, there, there's priorities and they're all set by the government, the people we vote in, um, but on a day-to-day -day basis, you can have more of an impact, um, which I think should be important to anybody who's, you know, who, who really sees charitable giving as, some, as a value of theirs. Um, you know, hand in hand with that, it's not just writing checks out into the world and saying, I'm done with this, I've, I've done my duty. Uh, the whole point is to actually, you know, have an effect. And it's easier to do that when it's an effect that you can see and you can see how you're helping um, an organization or people directly. Um, so that's why, that's why I don't always like giving to national or international organizations. I'd rather work closely with, with organizations in my community or that are related to something specific um, that, you know, one of my specific values. Um, and that on, on the same, on the same, um, you know, in the same vein, um, giving your time is, is, can, can be a lot more effective in, uh, in providing you with that immediate feedback and as to seeing how you're actually helping, um, whoever it is that you intend to help. Because a lot of times, I mean, you can send money to, um, and I've done this before, uh, I did some, uh, back on consumers and commentary, I did some, uh, charitable giving drives. And um, I, I've given to um, uh, Doctors Without Borders one year, and it, it was in response to I think uh, the, uh, the earthquake in Haiti. Um, you know, and so th these these were certain organizations that would put out a need when the, when a crisis arises. And I'm I'm not entirely sure that you know the funds that that. Consumerism commentary provided were, you know, used specifically for that specific goal. Even though the organization kind of uses that as a way to to gain more money, basically the whole fundraising process is is so slow that when something arises like an earthquake, um, an organization that does go out and they're on the ground helping people, they have to use funds that they already have. By the time they get out the fundraising. You know, they're basically raising money for the next crisis at that time. So it's something to keep in mind just as you try to decide, you know, how you want to give and how your money can be most effective. Uh, sometimes, you know, really looking into community organizations or smaller groups would be something that, you know, would be more beneficial. And I think going back to your tax question, uh, the research shows that even if you stop – well, first of all, as Harlan pointed out, all of our tax money isn't going to wealth re redistribution. I mean, we have things to pay for like roads and the postal service and law enforcement and things like that that we, you know, everybody uses and it's, it's not just welfare. But they've done studies and they've found that even if you got rid of that sort of wealth distribution, the philanthropy we have in the United States would not be enough to take care of the disadvantaged, to take care of the poor. Um, and they have a study that says for each of the last 40 years, Americans have given away the same proportion of money without change, roughly percent, roughly 2% of GDP. Even after the Bush tax cuts in the early part of the 2000s, the rate of giving did not rise at a, a percentage of GDP. So even if you cut taxes, and, and get rid of that aspect of it, it doesn't mean people are going to be giving more money to charity. And then on top of that, I know I'm just going to overwhelm you now, on top of that, um, it says it shows that, that a lot of what we give away, about a third of it, um, close to 32%, actually goes to churches and religious institutions, and then uh, a good deal of, of it after that goes to hospitals and universities and cultural institutions like museums. And so one of the things that they found are these, these wealthy people who are giving money and getting their tax break for it are giving to institutions that benefit them. So they're getting a tax break for giving to institutions like museums um, that they get to go to and go to gala events at and enjoy. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because I enjoy a good museum. I like to go to the museum. But at the same time, this idea that, oh, well, if we just uh, change the way we do taxes or if we let charity take over, then all of a sudden all of our poor would be cared for. That's not, that's not the case. We would still have hunger problems and there would still be issues. And so taxes really don't even account for a drop and, you know, it doesn't really do the same thing. And charity plus government programs are really needed. And even those are falling short in a lot of cases. 
Speaking of uh, taxes, I, I can't speak to the American side, but in Canada, we, we get some really good tax credits on our donations. So, like, like with a with a regular donation, you can easily get uh, like a two hundred dollar credit back on your five hundred dollar donation. And if you're donating to a political party, they'll happily give you back seventy five percent. So, uh, you're better off uh, donating to to political parties than 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 regular uh, charities here. But uh, Either way, they're, they're both really solid uh, donations on, or uh, credits on your donations. So, so we have economic terms of economic mm -hmm. lag and uh, mismatched uh, incentives <laughs> that we have as problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think, too, I, also to Harlan's point about charity and, and giving to community organizations, I that's something actually that I really enjoy and that kind of hits home for me too. I prefer the food bank and like local women's and children's uh, uh, shelters just because those are things that I see an impact in the community and things are important and um, I'm going to say something terrible now and <laughs> but I actually started reducing the amount that I give to my church directly uh, because I was looking at how the money was being used or rather how they weren't reporting how the money was being used and I wasn't sure that it was really doing that much good for the, the poor. And so my husband and I talked about it, and we cut our tithing. And we started moving that money from going to our church, which is a world organization kind of on a large scale. We moved it from our church, and we still give to our church, but not as much. And we started shifting that toward community efforts and, and putting our money there because we wanted it to be more effective. So there is kind of that aspect too because we we really did look at, look at the church and our our particular church and we were looking at it and going eh, I don't know that the money's going someplace useful where we want it to go and you know I think that's a it's a common problem and, and I'm sure your, your church is, is fine and, and the money really is uh, you know there, there was a good portion of it going <laughs> to help people but there are a lot of organizations <laughs> it's a nice thought <laughs> There are a lot of organizations out there where you find out after the fact that um, a good portion of the money is administrative, you know, and um, there was, I, I don't have the, the report in front of me, but uh, the thing you see around a lot are these um, little kind of dumpster drop-offs for clothes and such, which sound like a great idea and I've used them many times, but then you find out that there's these organizations that really just kind of take them, they take the money and they're not quite legit. So I think a big problem also is, you know, how do you vet these companies? How do you figure out, um, you know, is your money going to its end goal? Yeah, um, well, one of the first things that I tend to do, uh, especially if I hear about an organization in the news that sounds interesting to me or if I just find out about a group and I want to see, you know, how they, how they run things, there are two sites I tend to check, and the first is um, Charity Navigator, Oh. Um, and uh, the second is GuideStar. Both of them have uh, useful information that will tell you um, quite a bit about um, any or any not any nonprofit 501c3 in the United States organization that um, you could you could possibly uh, get a tax deduction for for your donation. Um, even you know I I I like going in even deeper than that because you wouldn't. Um, well, I mean, I have, but you shouldn't um, invest in companies without, you know, understanding their financial um, goals and their financial status and, and their outlook. Um, you really shouldn't give to a charity without uh, reviewing their Form 990, uh, which is an IRS tax form that every charity needs to file every year. Um, except for very new charities and except for charities that are, uh, I think, if they have less than fifty thousand dollars in revenue in a year, they don't need to file one, or they file a small version of it. But either way, for most charities, there's going to be this form 990 that they filed, publicly available, and you can find it easily on on one of those two sites that I just mentioned. And uh, you can find out an organization this way because uh, they all have to report uh, their revenue, they all have to report their expenses. You can see how they're spending their money. You can see how highly paid their CEO is. You can see if there's some kind of disconnection between, um, you know, the, uh, the highly compensated employees within the nonprofit and their mission. And these are all things that you should look out for. Um, 
Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to do because sometimes it can be convoluted, especially with these international organizations, uh, where you have one company that, one organization that's kind of the global umbrella organization, and then they have one, you know, perhaps one, one branch of their organization is just for the United States, and then maybe even each state has its own, uh, chapter of this organization. And, the organization you could be dealing with could be any one of those. So you kind of have to, you know, get get a good feel for who you're dealing with uh, before you before you decide to send a check or give them your support. There's a couple sites for Canadian listeners as well. Uh, CharityIntelligence.ca actually rates all the different charities, and uh, the CRA also has a page. But we'll have to give you a link for that after because it's long. Ah, <laughs> uh, the CRA. <laughs> so like with anything with money. Uh, it helps to do your homework and find out what's going on out there if you really want to be effective with it, it seems like. So don't just jump on something because some celebrity or big cause is out there. You really want to find out to, if your money is hitting its end goal with people that it's actually helping. Yeah, and do some research on the ground, too. Um, you know, before you, if, if, if you're contemplating a sizable donation, you know, uh, Talk to talk to people who work at the organization. Talk to uh, talk to uh, the director or the CEO or whoever you can get in touch with. Volunteer for a while. Um, really get a feel for how that organization works in the community that it's supposed to help, um, because that will that will give you some insight that perhaps reading the 990 or the uh, or the ratings on uh, any one of the websites that rates uh, organizations. Uh, they won't give you that. Uh, they won't give you what it feels like to be part of that organization. So I think that's a, a good way to to to, uh, to vet what you're doing as well. And here's another thought. I, I know you've talked about volunteering your time and how that's what you've done in the past, and I've done that as well. Um, but there's still this feeling that I've gotten, at least I don't know if any of you have gotten that, where if you're not giving enough money, you're not really donating where maybe your time is somehow discounted. Um, but is that right? I mean, how valuable is your time versus the dollars that you give to a, a company? Well, it's interesting that we can get a tax deduction for the money that we provide to an organization, but we can't get any tax deduction for the time that we spend volunteering. And I think, you know, people have had some thoughts over the years and how we might be able to fix that. And uh, at the organizational level, I know that organizations try to show how much they appreciate um, the time that their volunteers give. Um, you know, some organizations more than others, and you have to, you know, determine whether you're being appreciated enough. I mean, when you look at it, isn't the the, the reason that we give part of part of the reason that we give our time, treasure, and talent is because we have a need within ourselves to do good. So in the end, you know. Perhaps there is there is a bit of selfishness to actually giving away money because we are doing part of this part of it for you know this this need that we have within ourselves to be a good person. Um, so you know it's it's just something to think about you know uh, how how much appreciation do you need? Um, I, you look at like Miranda was talking about the people who give to museums. You give a lot of money to a museum, they're going to name a wing after you. You're going to have your name, uh, you know, for for everyone to see. Everyone who goes through this museum, all of your all of your peers, um, will, uh, you know, it's 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 an interesting way to 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 make your name kind of stand out a little bit. But that's that might not be right for everybody. Um, you know, there's there's certainly a um, a good reason to want to give anonymously. Um, uh, you know, that, that kind of shows that this, this really isn't about me. Um, you know, I'm trying to do a good thing here for people who I, I care about. But at the same time, um, organizations do like to see people giving money non-anonymously because there is a lot of, because there's a social factor. And this was, you know, even way before there was, uh, you know, social media on the internet. Uh, but there's a social factor in that as your peers see you um, doing certain things, the, the thought is that they will also want to, um, you know, contribute as well. Um, you know, they'll feel like that is the right thing to do. It's it's a little bit of a peer pressure thing. 
Um, but that's why organizations like, um, you know, they, they, they often prefer that givers not be anonymous. Yeah, there is a, a status to, to how much you can give also, isn't there? Um, you know, you, you look around any major city and you start seeing the names of things and you realize who these connect back to and it's, uh, a lot of it is the robber barons of the, the, you know, the early, uh, the late 1800s, the early 1900s, you know. Uh, it kind of whitewashes a lot of um, a lot of ills that have been done in, in maybe uh, fighting your way up to the top. Um, but um, what what would you consider volunteering time? I mean, does it does it have to be something along the lines of, of working in a soup kitchen, or could it be something as simple as volunteering with the PTA? You know, to what level does that is that considered? Well, I think it all depends on who you want to uh, reach with whatever you're doing. Um, you know, something like the PTA, I mean, obviously, organiza these organizations need to exist because they need the help to organize school functions and, um, and everything else that goes along with that. Obviously, there, there needs to be, that needs to exist um, because we don't have any other way to do it. Um, so that is certainly one way to give your time, but... If, if that, you, you look at who you're impacting, you're impacting, um, you know, you're impacting the school, you're impacting the future, you know, the future leaders of whatever it happens to be, your community, um, and that could be interesting enough to you, uh, and it certainly should be, um, for, you, for you to consider that as, you know, giving back to your community in some way, because it really is. But, you know, if that really isn't, all that interesting to you? Maybe you don't even. Maybe you don't have children. Um, it's. It would look weird if you were on the PTA and you didn't have any children in the school. Um, but you know, um, you look around the marching band organizations and you see parents who continue to help out year after year, even though their kids have graduated in the past. Um, so you know, you kind of think about that too. But you know, if if you're more interested in helping, you know, the homeless or something like that, or if you're more interested in in working in the arts. Then you know the PTA might not be uh, you know you might do that, but it might not be where you see yourself as you know contributing the most of what you contribute. And and I'm not knocking the PTA. I'm just throwing it out there is that <laughs> there are different levels maybe or or different ways that you can volunteer your time. And you know I, I don't want to say that one is necessarily any better than the other. I'm just trying to throw it out there and see what what you guys think about that um, when I threw that question out there. Um, but I, I think you, you find your wheelhouse, and as long as you can affect somebody else's life, then um, what you're volunteering is worthwhile. Well, yeah. and I, I also point out that charity isn't always about um, helping the poor. I mean, that's how a lot of people think of charity. Um, and uh, it's certainly a great way uh, to, to, uh, to think about it, but it's not the only way. I mean, you know, uh, there, there are lots of other things that you can do. I mean, one of the organizations that I work with, um, you know, basically the, the people who participate in this are middle class, upper middle class families. So it's not really charity so much, but we are providing people a service that they're not getting any, they're not getting in their schools, they're not getting this type of education elsewhere. So it is filling a hole, even if that hole, you know, might not be for the poorest of, of you know, the community. Well, right, just because you're not affecting a third world nation doesn't necessarily mean that your work isn't doesn't have validity to it. Right. Well, and I think a lot of it has to do with what you are comfortable with and what is important to you and what you think is a, a worthy cause and what you think, as Harlan said, will impact people in a way that you think is good for your community. I think a lot of it has to do with getting outside of yourself getting out there, making those connections, and being a part of your community and a part of the larger society. A lot of the time, especially now, it's so easy just to get wrapped up in yourself and get wrapped up in what's going on in your own life. And especially, you know, I work behind a computer every day, and one of the things that I started doing uh, last year was I did. I joined the PTA <laughs> and it's not something that I would normally have thought but education is important and I think that it's a you know worthy cause and I thought this gets me out and connects me more with my community and helps get 
me involved and it kind of takes me out of myself. And one of the things, you know, my son was going to do for Martin Luther King Jr. Day is they had this activity at the school where they went and they packed lunches for a local homeless shelter. And that's that sort of meaningful service that connects you with your wider community, I think, has value in and of itself because it does force you to kind of not be as self-centered. It's so easy for us to just go in our garages and shut our garage doors and never have to interact with other people. And being having those roots in the community, I think, helps build our society and helps us connect to people we wouldn't maybe normally connect to and also helps us be more aware of the people around us. They, they talk about the bubbles we get in and how it's hard for us to relate to people we don't know and relate to their situations when we don't know them. And I think being able to get out there and volunteer some time to a cause you think is good brings you outside of yourself and connects you more, and I think that benefits everyone. And I think when you consider it that way, too, it, it maybe opens up the universe of, of volunteering um, a little more uh, you know, it doesn't have to be that I'm going to go and work the soup kitchen somewhere on a specific holiday or, or something like that. It, it could be something as simple as, uh, you know, doing a local fundraiser for something or helping a local organization um, do something. Even if it's on a smaller scale, you can still put a lot into it and still get a lot out of it. Um, so I think that's important for people to know. It does, everything doesn't have to be a giant um, save the world sort of organization or event. I think. So, I mean, besides uh, charities, what other ways maybe could we use our money uh, for good to help people? Uh, well, one of the ways that I think that we can use our money to help people is to uh, be entrepreneurial. And I, I think that, you know, 10 years ago, I'd be surprised to hear myself saying this, but it really is true. Um, being able to start your own business, um, as you know, assuming that business is focused somewhat on a service or product that people need, and you know, not every business is. Um, you know, you you are providing something back to the world, and you're you are possibly using your own money to uh, to fund that endeavor. Uh, I think it can be interesting that way. Um, uh, I uh, last year I started a nonprofit of my own. Um, I haven't gotten very far with it, um, but you know that's something that people can consider doing. They can they can start a foundation, they can start um, a charity, and you don't need a lot of money to do it. Just a lot of drive and a lot of interest in whatever you're whatever you're planning to do. You don't always have to go out to another organization to help people. You can you can you can start something on your own, whether it's a business or a nonprofit or a charity or a foundation. So you, you get to go out there and be your own agent of change, basically. Yeah, absolutely, and you can even do that without an organization. You can just go out and do it. You know, you don't have to start a business. You don't have to. If if there's something that you have in mind that you are passionate about and you're ready to help in some form, you just go out and do it. Um, you know, you can use your own money and and uh, buy people sandwiches if that's what it is. You know, it's, there's nothing there's nothing that's really stopping you. Good stuff, good stuff. And, and I mean, I think it, yeah, if something comes up, you could probably create your own like one-off event or or something along those lines. Just organize something and just get people in your community together for something that doesn't like you said doesn't have to be uh, a freestanding organization that does it. And you can yeah. probably piggyback off something else, a church event or a scout event or a fire department event or something like that, and then help to, uh, to make some change. Yeah, and I think people are just naturally drawn to this, too. So people see you doing this, and they'll just want to join along, and that's, and that's a good thing. I mean, you can start a movement that way. It doesn't take much. And things snowball in a, in a good way, too, when you start getting people involved and really start putting your own uh, genuine energy into something. I think people find something authentic in that, and they'll, they'll, they're more apt to help you than if you just see a, a commercial for something, perhaps. Sure. So if we want to start doing something, 
I mean, maybe where do we start thinking about it? I think you, you hit on it earlier on when maybe we have to kind of take care of um, our own household at least. You know, if you have high debt or if you're really kind of, you know, behind eight ball with bills and whatnot, um, where should the average person start putting their head into maybe doing more? Well, I think the first thing that anybody needs to do is, uh, you know, take a survey of their own values and figure out what's important to them to, to, to get some focus. Um, if, you're ju if you're just getting started with this, it, it really helps to get an idea of what you want to do first and what's important to you and from there you can move on and see what's needed in the world, what already exists, you know, how can I contribute um, and all of that um, before you even start thinking about how much money you have to give and how much time you have to give, figure out what your, you know, what, what's important to you and what your values are. Uh, I think that's the most important thing to start and then you can start to look at, well, okay, so let's say that my 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 one passion is um, you know providing science education for uh, for inner city um, inner city youth or something like that um, you know if, if that's you, you know you you have experience in science for instance and that's something that you really want to do so uh, and you see a need for this because uh, you know whether the schools are failing kids or whatever the issue is they're not getting enough support for science at home. Um, you figure out what aspect of that you want to really help with. And then you do the research and you see what's being done right now, what can be improved, you know, based on your own experience with this, or, or you know, maybe you need more time to study this and figure out what, you know, what, what the issues really are, what people are facing. Um, and I would give it a lot of time. I mean, there's no need, need to rush into this. I mean, if, if you're finding yourself at the end of the year and you're just looking for a tax deduction, there are better ways to do this than you know giving your money blindly to an organization, um, and I have ideas for that too. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll start an organization on the spot, and if anybody wants to give us money, <laughs> right. let's turn this into a nonprofit right here. <laughs> as long as it's not the human fund from Seinfeld. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, you know, I think in general, people people do enjoy when they they give something to someone. Um, they do enjoy it, and I, I think it's a it's a good feeling to know that you're impacting someone really in a positive way. And I think just um, you know, like you said, Harlan, being able to be on the on the ground and seeing what you're doing take effect um, it, is very impactful, uh, as opposed to just putting a twenty dollar check in the mail and. Uh, and maybe alleviating some guilt that you might have because you're not doing enough. Um, and it doesn't take a lot to, to do a whole lot. So I think we've done a, a great job of talking about um, charity and, and doing good with your money and time in general. And um, what we like to do here is we like to do a final word and go around and get everybody's uh, summation of our topic. So uh, we'll start with you, Tom. What's your final word on um, doing the best with your money and time for good? Uh, for me, it's it's about how to use your time effectively. Uh, we mentioned it recently on it, on making extra income. You you kind of look at what you're good at, look at your hobbies, and you can kind of do the same with with how you donate your time. Like I I've built websites for for charities, so that they can get ticket sales and everything for their event. And it, it's it's just sort of using what what you're good at. It's it's a lot more effective. Like an hour of me doing that. Is probably more useful than me being in a soup kitchen for an hour or something like that. And Miranda, your final word. I think that uh, there's this idea, as we were kind of mentioning a little bit before, that you have to do something grand and marvelous, and really you don't. I think, I think the issue is doing something to get outside of yourself and try and make a difference. And, and kind of, I read this book once, and basically just that you know you try to make whatever corner of the world you're in a better place. You don't have to go out there and try and change the world. You can start small, as we were talking about earlier, and you can do something to engage with your community just to make your community a better place. If if everybody just did small things to help engage with their community and get to know their neighbors and help in their community, then a lot of our issues would probably not exist. And Harlan, what's your final word? 
Yeah, I would say just to wrap things up, I mean, um, you know, you want to give effectively, whether you're giving your time, talent, or treasure, or a combination of the three, um, and you want to make sure that you're not doing a disservice to yourself at the same time. Um, and, you know, the way to do that is to be on top of your finances in the first place, which is, you know, stuff I've been talking about for, I don't know how long now. And, um, you know, being able to, uh, you know, that, that, that gives you the starting point that's going to let you, um, be able to be not in control not only of your finances, but of, you know, what you're putting out into the world. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and I'll just add in, you know, I think a lot of what you said was great stuff for everybody here. Um, it, it doesn't have to be big. Everybody has something that they can give somebody else um, as far as the ways to help. It, it could be monetary. It could be that your time. Everybody has some sort of maybe expertise or something that they could um, help pass on to somebody else. Um, so, you know, we should all at least try to do something. Um, even if we're, we're down on money, uh, we could find something to do. And I think as Miranda was saying, you know, everybody does something a little bit and really we can uh, snowball and make something better happen. So thank you, thank you, Harlan, for joining us today and sharing your insight. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We love having you here. Um, where can people learn more about what you're doing, um, both online and off? Well, normally I say um, LukeLandis.com is a good place to go, but, I, you know, I... I've been spending my time on other things. Um, you know, the Polaris Awards right now is taking up most of my time. So, um, you know, just look for uh, the Polaris Awards coming at a new website to you sometime in the next who knows when. Uh, but, yeah, the Polaris Awards, and um, check me out on Twitter, at uh, Luke underscore Landis. That's probably the best way to figure out what's going on. All right. <clears throat> Looking forward to, uh, to hearing about all of your projects. Not just the Bluetooth Awards, um, although we do appreciate the Bluetooth here as we are a, a, an award-winning show. That's um, right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again, Luke, for joining us, and thank you everybody out there who's listening and watching. And until next week, be good with your money. Good night. Thanks for joining us on the Money Mastermind Show. Get more information at moneymastermindshow.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes and YouTube, and follow us on Google Plus.